Hey, you veteran PDR techs, thinking about getting into motorcycle PDR, or perhaps you already are, but you don't have that professional stand. Well, the new Daniel Grom MPDR Vice 2.0 offers the ultimate gas tank setups with better leverage, stability, and access when it comes to those challenging dents. Order your MPDR Vice Stand 2.0 at motopdr.com. Say, say kids, what time is it? PDR tool, tool, tool time. Hey, what's up, everybody? We are going to do a raw edition right now. We're going to try to keep it a little bit short. You guys are going to hear us from the raw, as in raw dog. We got Vince D'Alessandro, Daniel Grom, and myself, hey. Mike Toledo. He's jumping in. See? See, he wasn't supposed to do that. So we're not going to cut this out. We're not even going to cut it out. We're going to go right with it. I think you guys got more <laughs> handsome since the last time I saw you. <laughs> Yeah, good thing we don't put this on video, man. I look like a freaking fat chipmunk now. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, all right. So what's cracking? What's going on on this episode? This is our second episode, man. This I is know. Good. What, are, what, right. are, what are we doing we on here? It. What are we, we doing? Made. Well, I just got news from uh, from Barry McCarthy. Who's uh, that? The Duda. Oh, the good. Duda. Oh, He's you were been, talking uh, about that in the last episode about the Duda. What's cracking, lagging? Absolutely. He's been going back and forth on. Uh, Facebook with me on instant messenger. He's actually in Auckland, New Zealand. His, uh, his mother-in-law has passed away actually about two to three weeks ago. And I guess, uh, they're finally getting to the funeral portion of it. And, uh, he'll be back in Ireland and pushing out that doodah in no time, hopefully right. getting it out to us in the States. That's awesome. Very, our condolences you, go out to you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. More important condolences. Uh, how many how many doodahs did you get? Uh, mine's still stuck in uh, TSA somewhere, okay. right. in LA. Are I you got guys zero? Just so because this is a raw I got dog. minus one. <laughs> I got minus one too. You know what? Uh oh, we're hearing some feedback. What's cracking? What happened right there? Paul Corden. Paul Corden has a doodah. And how does he get a a doodah and I don't? Uh, that you know what? I don't know. But there's another guy. Who's that other guy that did the PDR college? Uh, Bryce. Bryce Kelly. Uh huh. Yeah. Is it uh -huh. Kelly? Yeah. Uh, he's got a doodah. I saw something on the internet on uh, Facebook. He did in the a interweb. in the interweb interlude. Uh, he did a big dent on the roof of what looked like an F one fifty or a truck through the third tail light. He used the doodah in that mm. area. Interesting. That was about a week back, and it turned out pretty sweet and clean. Cool. Nice. That's freaking yeah. great, man. So, Daniel, uh, the the copy of the doodah is the Dent Monster. How's that going? Because I know you bought that at MTE. I did buy that, and I have not used it yet. I haven't had a need arise yet for that particular tool unfortunately let me let me get something real quick guys if you guys are listening to this podcast and you want to know what the heck we're talking about sometimes it's hard to describe on there we have a website pdrtooltime.com just go to the blog and you'll see the not only you'll hear the podcast you can actually see some of the photos that we're pertaining to and if we have a website for you we'll actually put that in there for you as well so <laughs> Good point. Um, so the doodah is a tool that leverages off the tire of a automobile and gets leverage off of that. It's It's got a large handle and it's kind of a V-shaped tool and with interchangeable tips. And the idea is it works really good on front fenders, but on back fenders, you can actually get enough power to push through the first layer of metal to hit the second layer of metal and actually move move a fender through the wheel well now if you're through going the through the well. tail light you actually have a, a fulcrum point and a leverage point uh to work off of as well yeah. uh i've i've seen him use it through a tail light i saw uh like i mentioned bryce kelly he used it through the third uh tail light up above on the cab of a truck and obviously the front fenders you could use it through there as well uh, one thing that I think it resembles, uh, if you look at those ice climbers that climb up icebergs and stuff like that, it looks like one of their ice pick axes yeah. in a way. And, uh, 
I believe his he he started off with an aluminum version, which John highly has an aluminum version, and I don't think it was strong enough. No, he said it bent. Yeah. Bent. So, uh, you know, that was a prototype, anyways. Uh, but now Barry has a steel version of it, which is tubular uh, strength steel, and it works a lot better from what I hear. Nice. Yeah, and the uh, and the the one I got is a steel version, but um, he claims it was. That's the dent monster, though. Dent, dent monster, dent. yeah, fender sure. monster, yes. and it's primarily designed as a glue pulling tool, and um, which I have not received the glue pulling portion. They didn't have it at the show when I bought the tool. They're supposed to send that to me. I'm waiting for that. And uh, so I haven't been able to use it as a glue pulling tool. And, um, but I haven't even been able to use it at all. I haven't found a, a place for it yet. So. Now it kind of looks like what, like almost like a V, V shaped tool, right? Yeah. And on one end of the V, it's got a, like an apparatus you can put like tips or something on it, right? Or yeah. On the inside, yeah. and, right? And both tools do have the universal, uh, tip sets to them so you yeah. you can't use ultra uh, ultra tip or dent craft as well yeah and yeah. it's made to go in the fenders and really push some nasty stuff out and and vince you told me it's even good for pulling like a double wall double metal or on the fender right or something a rear quarter panel or something yeah the, and that and daniel was touching on that you could actually push there's so much driving force behind it that if it's on the lip of a, a rear quarter panel you're gonna be able to push through that second skin as well yeah, anything that can help us drive more metal, especially at our ages, <laughs> with less yeah. effort, you know, uh, that, that's always going to be good. Hey, uh, are you guys getting any of that, still that same feedback or not? I just switched over my, uh, no, my, sounds good. To my headset, so it should be okay now. No, do you, but do you, have you been getting that, that noise that you said you were getting before? Slight. Slight. Anyway. You, okay. Um, You know, one of the things that MTE that, um, I think was unnoticed was some of the new tools that Steve at Ultra has. And um, he has got two new prototype tools that he was showing off there. One, which was a fender tool. And this thing is like a big, huge C clamp. And it's designed to move body lines on front fenders. And I filmed it and I didn't, I didn't actually get to play with it though. I'm Steve was still doing some adjustments. It was a prototype tool, but I actually got excited about it. It's, it's a large tool and it's not going to be cheap. It's going to be expensive. He's got a lot of money in this thing. You can tell that he's taking some time and building this thing and he's got a bunch of different dies. Um, like 800 but, bucks or something, right? Like yeah, I, I think that's what he was hitting about was around eight hundred dollars. But I, I, I saw huge it. potential. I didn't get to. I didn't get to really watch it in action. And then he was so busy. I, I, I was trying to periscope it, but he wouldn't let me do it. Another thing too is we need to get uh, get over to Steve and, and do some you know live periscope or live podcasting from over there. But we'll see. Yeah. Steve is kind of a stickler about that sometimes. But but he also had another tool there that. I don't think he showed off to anybody and this is something I'm more excited about and it's a an apparatus that's designed to go around the the tires of cars and give you leverage off the middle of the car using a pogo stick type of tool now if you guys don't know what a pogo stick is if you're doing large dents and you want to glue pull a large dent, pull out the majority of that large dent, you're going to want to use a pogo stick. The reason why is you've got a, a tremendous amount of leverage, but you can control that leverage slow. You pull that dent out really slow. Like on front fenders, I use it, um, you know, when the front fender has been pushed back into the door and you can't open that front door? Yeah, that's that's where a pogo stick really works well. You put a big tab glue pull, you glue pull it, and you can pull it away from the, the that door edge, and 
but you can pull tension on it and see if that door opens and closes and you just have a lot more control over the dent and that's what steve's tool does but he's bridged it between the two tires so you can use it in the middle of the car because the pogo stick you have to leverage it off the tire Mm -hmm. And um, so he's made this tool so you can bridge it in between it. Does and that make I just, sense? Yeah, it does. And especially seeing that I just Googled pogo stick dent tool. And uh, there are some, uh, it's almost like a frame machine in a way, you know, it, using the exactly. chains. Exactly. It is a frame machine. It's yeah. a handheld frame machine. And you yeah. know where else you want to use that tool? Do you ever get a truck bed where the the guy had some big cargo in the back of the truck bed and it shifted <laughs> forward and it shoved the back of the the truck bed into the cab? Yes, it's on my truck as we speak. I got to okay. dodge That's the, where has that dent right now. A pogo stick will take that dent out like that. And I get I get 110 bucks for that and it takes me 5 seconds. Nice. I'm going to try that once I get a pogo stick. 110, yeah, dude. You might as well charge more than that, right? You can do that. I usually do it in front of them. That's the only reason. Oh. I think. <laughs> Got it. Got it, it. It makes it so easy. Yeah. Oh, well, I've been. Uh, what else is going on? What's what else is cracker lacking on some tools, man? I've got some. Uh, what else I got? Shoot, I forgot what I got, man. You guys take over while I've lost my train of thought. I, I, I got to look for my show notes. I don't, I don't know if you want to touch on the Mobile Tech RX, which is just building oh. so so many you know, followers right now. That That is going to be a monster. Well, that, I've been that's going to be a jam, game changer. I have been using it. Thank you in for my opinion. Thanks, Vince. I've been using it. I, I have some questions about it, though, because when I send the invoice to the customer, I want them to see the whole thing. You know, uh, it's all, It only sends them the description of what I fixed. But on their RX, they have a full, you know, car layout where you can, you know, click on this and click on that, which is really cool. Um, it It's a little bit, you have to know from going from estimate to work order to invoice, you know, that's, that's that. I do want them to have an, uh, do you, I would do like you to find, go ahead. You, how long have you been using it for now? About four days right now, but it's still too early. You know what okay. I mean? Yeah, four days. That's way too early. I don't even have it yet. I actually just emailed them yesterday about it. Uh, I'm really excited about this program, especially really having stable. a shop. Yeah, it, uh, having a shop, and I haven't downloaded the 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 30 day uh, trial just yet because I I do want to wait until they have the wheel repair and bumper repair up and running before I try it out. Uh, being a brick and mortar, I offer these services to my customers. So I want to make sure that everything is working properly before I commit to that monthly subscription. Yeah, I I, I think it's really good. It, it's really good so far. And the only thing the I one, wish I would like it to have a signature on the work order before because or the estimate because. Yeah, the customer, legal reasons. Yeah, because, Sign that. Yeah, because we got exactly because we got bar to worry about. Oh, and they don't have that? They don't have that. Okay. Not that I saw. So I don't think every every state has bar like we do here. And if for those that don't understand what bar is, it's Bureau of Automotive Repair. And when you're a member of bar, even if you're not a member of bar, it's it's like the mafia. Yeah, of, uh, I like going repair. to the bar. <laughs> sure, but it's B dot A dot R. Yeah, you have don't don't you have to do that, uh, Daniel? We have to give them a. Yeah, they have, you have to give them a, an invoice uh, before you do the repair, and then you give them a new one yeah. after you're done with the repair. Yeah, the BAR is a racket. It is. Um, good. It is a racket. They're the mafia, but they can they can put a uh, they could shut you down, down a lot of hurt on on you. Well, you especially if you have a shop. But yeah, no, I I started uh, having a brick and mortar shop. I have to give every customer a written estimate. Um, have to have all their information. Have all of our information. All our ducks are in the row. Um, that's what's cool about this though. It, it puts, once you put the VIN number in, you can either, I haven't got it to where it didn't work on the first time I tried it though, but we'll see. I mean, I'm sure it's, but it, it the, scans the VIN. The one the thing VIN. I like about them is they, it's, it's a very clean interface. It's, it's probably one of the nicest looking, uh, electronic estimators. And honestly, we should, we should probably save this for a, a later episode and actually Absolutely. have we all need to get well, it. We, yeah, right we, we'll touch we'll on touch. this when everyone has it. But but for me, far so far, I like it. I, I really like it. So all right, the, let's the move on. Thing, then. Well, the big thing that they have 
that I really like is you can do a comparison of what a body shop would charge. Sure. Yeah. And that's, I that's, haven't got to that part though, where you can use the R and I, I, I don't know. I, oh, I, that's not R and I. No, no, no. no okay. No. Right. Well, the Mitchell can, program. Okay. It's right? called comparative pricing, which within the, the, the app itself. So you could see once you set up your program or your, uh, your estimate for PDR, you could hit some button on it. I don't have it in front of me, but you could, you could hit uh, a tab and it'll show you how much it would cost to replace see, that. See, I, I honestly think that door. since we're talking about this thing, I almost feel like I have to change the way how I give estimates now, because if I have that you tool might, in yeah. the target estimator, I will probably have to send my technicians and myself go out personally and look at these cars first and then give them that because that's the only way to get, can't really do it just by text messaging. You know what I mean? Cause you're missing out on all this true cost, what it would be. I mean, I feel like I would close the deal more better if well, I had this all right there in front of them instead of, well, let's face it. The, the, any of these estimating, uh, software or app programs, they're geared towards the, the hill professional or the shop. So, or the shop, if you have a shop, I'm not going to go, you know, I, I have a shop. Daniel has a shop. We're not going to go out and do an estimate and then go back to our shop. You know, it, it makes more sense if the customer's coming in. Yeah. you have a comparative pricing standpoint? Hey, you know what? This is what it's going to cost if you do a traditional type of body shop repair opposed to PDR. This is what we're charging. You know, it's, it's a, it's going to be a better sale if you have brick and mortar compared to well, going yeah. mobile. I'm, no, I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say because you guys know I'm going to get a shop. It looks like sure. probably at the end of this year or early early next year, um, which I'm super happy about. Absolutely. So, <laughs> and um, and I'm looking forward to it. But I think something like this would be really really important to me. You know, I mean, this is something that a customer can look at. It's tangible with the target estimator. And, and, and all I'll be honest, I I've, I've looked at them all and. I still don't feel like they're they're meeting the brick and mortar needs completely, and the one component that's most important to me is being able to schedule it. It has to have a built-in scheduler uh, in the estimate program. Um, I want that program to not only schedule the the dent, but send that customer a reminder. Reminders are a big big Could, deal. Well, don't don't you use Google Mail or Google Calendar? Or? Or, yeah, but it's a separate program. I want it integrated into. So you don't that. have to keep a, 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 adding yeah, different it's, data. It's already sending them um, the way these things are set up. It's already set up to send them a copy of the estimate. And why not have a built in reminder um, into that? And that's um, that's huge because when you're ha when you have a shop, um, the more you can reduce your no shows the more money you'll make. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. No shows are a big deal. Fortunately, I've I've compensated that with the motorcycle uh, paintless dent removal and I've always got a motorcycle uh, tank on my shelf so I can if someone doesn't show, I just grab a motorcycle tank and I switch to that mode. Well, that's, and that's an, a and, great thing to have. And that's, that's another great. show in itself. So Yeah. Cuz we it, just as we were sitting here, I I got a text message uh, update saying that I won't be able to make my eight o'clock appointment tomorrow morning from the customer. So, you know, that's $325 of lost revenue for tomorrow morning, you know, less than 24 hours before the appointment. Yeah. So, you know, it, it is when you do have a shop, you do have to deal with cancellations and it's nice that you have a alternative that could keep the cash flow coming in. Well, at least you got a notification. <laughs> I <laughs> did this least time. Somebody, <laughs> courtesy, you know, yeah. He, well, well he's, hey, he's Mike, do you, ever, do you ever show up to a guy's house and they they're not there? Every once in a while, very very rare though, because we we learned our lesson. Uh, unless it's a repeat, we, phone we, first. Exactly. Hey, I'm just letting let you know I'm ten minutes out or twenty minutes out, whatever it is. We always call, especially if we're going across town or something. You know, opposite yeah. side. Even yeah. even before we set the appointment, I'd say, hey, you, we run a tight schedule. We're going to call you 30 minutes to a, an hour ahead of time to confirm this appointment. If we don't hear from you, we're going to move on to our next exactly. appointment. Exactly, exactly. You know, as you get become a real veteran mobile tech, and yeah, you know what to do. You know, you know, you know some of the things to to look out for. Uh, I, I, if you guys haven't thought about a quick tip at all. Think of it so because you know towards the end of the show 
Uh, we're going to do a quick tip. And for you listeners, it'll be well worth listening because we always have a cool quick tip to, uh, to talk about. I always preach PDRs like mixed martial arts. You have to know how to be a black belt in all categories. At Den Trainer, you can improve your skills no matter what skill level you are as a PDR technician. We have all the latest video tutorials that are described in extreme detail with diagrams and clear explanations. Let's say you're a route tech and you want to branch out into the hail. First thing you'll want to know is how to write a proper estimate. Or perhaps you're curious about the line board and want to become better at reading that particular reflection. Or maybe what's up with the new cold glue? We have it at Dent Trainer. Check it out. Memberships start as low as $59 per month. And right now, you can sign up for six months for only $179. Become a Dent Trainer member. You'll be glad you did. Um, yeah. Anything else going on in the news uh, besides that, besides the Big Dent you know, contest and, and the MTE next year? and They're talking about that. But if you guys haven't heard about that, listen to episode number one. You know, one of the one of the tools that I picked at, at, up at MTE, um, I like to show you guys is uh, this carbon fiber tool from um, Drew's Tools. It's carbon fiber. It's the lightest hammer uh, on the market. It's got a a uh, plastic head, but it's that plastic that um, they use in engine compartments. It's uh, it's super tough stuff. And this year drew, I had Drew's last year tool, which looks like, uh, this, it, it has one screw on tip. The other side has a pointed knockdown and love this tool. But this year he came out with a double ended screw tip. And this tool is my favorite blending hammer tool. And I put a, um, what is it? An R9, R9-6 from Dentcraft. Uh, Dentcraft on there as my blending tip. Um, it's kind of a mushroom head. Now and, for the audience, now Daniel, this is a podcast, so the audience can't yeah. see it. That's the carbon fiber one, and that is not the Shane Jack's knockoff one, correct? No, no. It's it's his $35 hammer. It's the cheapest $35. hammer. $35. 35 bucks. It's super lightweight. What you'll find with this tool is you don't get uh, arm fatigue with it. Um, you have more accuracy because it is lighter. And um, it's it works really well on uh, thin metal cars like a Subaru, for instance. And Absolutely. where you barely have to touch it. If I've I had use my... I bought hand. one last year too. I bought one last year. I've been using the hell out of it for a year now. You There's like only, it? I do. Yeah. I I don't have the the double sided interchangeable. I just have the one side, and uh, yeah, it's a great tool for twenty. Uh, what was it? Twenty five bucks? Thirty five bucks? It's uh, well, it was twenty five bucks. He raised it after I talked about it uh, to thirty five bucks. <laughs> yeah. So I shouldn't talk about it anymore. He's going to raise yeah. it up to forty five, but yeah, but. It's the control because it's so lightweight. Oh, and, sure. And, and what I, you can do with it. And, you know, uh, uh, mine mine didn't come with the little soft uh, foam piece at the end. But you could get that from any tackle shop. I Yeah, I, I hear that. I haven't found any of these foam things at the tackle shop. But, yeah. Drew, send Vinny a foam handle. No, he didn't want it. <laughs> Give me one at MTE. I, it was bothering him. I asked him at the end of the show. Drew, Drew's a, an inst interesting character. Years of uh, videotaping him with Mike, and uh, he couldn't hook me up with a little foam thing on my for my hammer. Send Vince. Uh, we're we're gonna do a uh, we're gonna take uh, uh, people's money right now if we can uh, all pitch in to buy Vinny a foam handle for it. <laughs> I'll be okay. I'm cheap that not that cheap. Actually I am that cheap. <laughs> I will uh I'll 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 cut it off of uh one of my son's tool or toys. I'm sure he has something made out of foam that I can now now if you go on Drew's uh site you won't find this under hammers. That's the thing. I think he has this under knockdowns or something like that. He doesn't actually consider this a hammer like I do. So, 
uh, don't look under his website under hand uh, hammers for this. Thing. And and the best part is all all tips work on there. Yeah, yeah. It's Drew standard. Drew does have a nice mushroom tip polished uh, tip that he sells as well. That I that's what I use on one side. Yeah. Um. I on I have three of these things, and one of them I put the um. I put the that's a uh, dent technology. Titanium. A yeah, titanium. Yeah, titanium tip, and keeps this thing really light. And this thing is badass, man. I love this tool. And that, you know what? That's one thing that was kind of lacking this year. Dent technology. You know, he did have a a a, a big showing in 2014, or I'm sorry, 2015 with his moonlight, which yeah. I like like to call the rainbow light. Actually, I had. I had a conversation with him last week and uh, we're going to bring him on. Um, he has some stuff to, to talk about and I'm going to save all that information. So we're going to every, every week we're going to try to bring on uh, a special guest. And um, I think that would be a good him. one because yeah. uh, he, he's got, he's got some explaining to do obviously with, you know, the failure of the, the rainbow light, I'm sorry, the moonlight. And, yes, uh, Lucy, you have some explaining to do. He has some explaining to do. However, his tips are great. I use that black plastic, uh, surgical grade plastic knockdown, and you know, plasteel tip. If, if you if you talk to Mike or you know guys that have known me for 10, 15, 20 years, I'm a metal knockdown type of guy, and. That is one knockdown tool that I've switched over the the dent technology uh, nylon tip. Yeah, it's it's actually made out of peak, and peak. Okay. the only people that sell that is Dent Technologies or Drew's Tools sells one too. And I believe uh, Eight One started carrying the dent technology okay. line as okay. well. But what you do is you get all the benefits of steel, but all the benefits of plastic, and um, Steel can be a little harsh on on softer paints or fresh paint, um, where this is a little bit more forgiving. I think, absolutely. We, you know, fresh uh, paint it still it still will mark fresh paint. Yeah, it no. still will. You have yeah. to be careful of fresh paint, but it, yeah. um, I it's my go to tip. That's what I use every day. Yeah, same here, and especially I would think on. Uh, on motorcycle gas tanks where the gauge of steel is so thick on those Harleys, you're, you need something sharp and, and it's going to oh, yeah. drive those high spots down. If, if you try to use your regular tip, it will mushroom the crap out of it. And, um, those peak tips will not do that. Yeah. Um, I've had my peak tick for a year and it's finally starting to mushroom a little bit. And that's yeah. fixing door edges and all sorts of crazy stuff. And you, you know what the trick is to sharpening that? Using, I have a, a bench buffer wheel with a, a really sturdy buffing wheel. And you're you're actually melting it back into to shape rather than gr grinding it. And, it. and it keeps it polished too without nice. having to repolish it. Well, uh, maybe that should be our tech tip for this episode because we're reaching the 40-minute mark here. Actually, I, I have a tech tip for everybody. So on your hammers, do you, I, I want to see if you know this one, Vince. So on your hammers or anytime you're putting a tip on anything, but especially your hammers, do you use an O-ring? Do you know that trick? Excuse me. I do not. No, I didn't know about that. Okay. So you put a little tiny rubber O-ring on the thread, over the thread, and then you screw it on, and it won't vibrate loose. Interesting. So when, you're, when you're hitting it, it won't unscrew. You know how you have to re-tighten it all every, every once in a while? Yeah. Or I use a, a blue Loctite, which uh, is not... It's uh, the the light duty, so you can unscrew it. But yeah, that's actually a better tip than uh, using Loctite on it. Yeah, and you can go to Harbor Freight, and they sell. They have uh, a little section in Harbor Freight that has all the little nuts and bolts, and they have little cases. They sell a little case 
filled with all kinds of sizes of of O-rings. And it's like three bucks. Well, here's the deal. As cheap as I am, Daniel, I hate shopping at Harbor Freight. I really do. But for O-rings, I think I could give in. Yeah. And and the other thing is you can buy uh, set screws, 516 set screws. So if you ever break a set screw in your in your tip and you need to replace it, you can buy a right next to the O-ring box, you can buy a box of of set screws, 516 set screws. So you can replace your set screws as well. And that tip, uh, you know, I wish I can give that credit to somebody. Somebody posted that on Facebook and I've been using it ever since and I love it. I your tech tip. I got to tell you, in all these years, I've never broke a set screw. Have, is it something common? No, I, I've only broken one, and that was on a, a tank, early, a Harley tank. A Harley tank. <laughs> 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 and, and with my new handle, um, I don't know if anybody's seen, uh, I had uh, Ultra. I called up Ultra, and I, and I uh, bypassed Steve, and I talked to the, the guys that actually make the tools. And Tom over there, and I, I said, "Hey, can you make me a handle? A I three foot make... long handle." I yeah, I want. Foot... <laughs> yeah, they they took two handles and welded them together, and made one big handle. And uh, yeah, it's it's huge. When Mike saw it, he thought it was a joke. He was like, "What are you going to use that for?" And uh, it's Put for twisting. It. Yeah, it's Put... for twisting on on a tank, and it looks crazy, but it works. And I well, love that thing. You're going to have to post a picture of that on uh, PDR Tool Time. Yeah. Tooltalk.com. Yeah. I, uh, I just worried about everybody's going to want want Ultra to make them one. <laughs> They're like, yeah. what? How do you guys know about this? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah. yeah. Okay, it looks like we lost Mike Toledo here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mike. Uh, Mike's getting yelled at right now. Mike is getting schooled by his boss yeah the real boss of the house yeah so many of uh, us have those as well yeah um and any of you guys out there that uh want to know more about my uh tank vice for sale you can uh text message me you can email me you can facetime me anything you want and uh i can uh send you a tank vice well, Daniel, it's about that time that we're going to have to wrap it up, and I'm going to have to move on down the road. Is your boss calling you now? My boss was just knocking at the door. Yeah, it's time so, for you to go. It's time Actually, for me to I, my boss. My boss wants a ride to the winery, so I might have to go to and and uh, shuttle her over to the winery. Yeah, well, we're, we're uh, having a little girly thing at some winery. That's fantastic. We uh we opted not to go to uh mass this morning and we're going to the five thirty mass. So it's four thirty eight and I better go clean up and get off to church. Okay. Say say hi to the Pope for me. I will say hi to the Pope for you. I'm not uh, sure if he's gonna hear me, but I'll say hi. Send me, uh, can you light a candle for me or something? What can you do for me? Daniel, I'll light three candles for you, my friend. Awesome. Cool. <laughs> All right, man. Well, I, this, I'm sure he's going to edit the the crap out of this. Yeah, which is fine. Well, <laughs> well, guys, we appreciate you listening in on us, and uh, this is episode two. And uh, always remember, level up your tools. Level up. Have a good day.